about the war. So um, let me um, repeat because I forgot to start recording this um, a moment ago. But again, the subject that we're working on this week and what I'm continue with, continuing with is interactivity. So uh, the subject of interactivity um, is when the end user or the person on your website has the um, ability to um, interact with it in some way and it's not totally passive. And the wow slider is one way of doing that. So as you can see on my website, this is, I've used wow slider and I've used this free version as I mentioned a moment ago, that it's free because I can't, uh, I'm not allowed to remove their little logo. But if you purchase it, then if you wanna remove it, it's fine. But um, it's okay with me that their logo is there and if it increases their sales, then so be it and that's wonderful. The hardest part, if you want to call it difficult, about creating a wow slider is the preparation. You have to decide in advance what file size you want. Um, mine is a little bit offbeat. Um, one of the standard sizes is uh, 640 by 480. This is just a little bit larger than that. Um, the one that I'll be um, doing today is 640 by 480. But you have to go into a program like Photoshop and create all of your images in advance. Um, and it's preferable if you save them as JPEGs, they can be saved as pings, any number of um, other file formats, but mostly JPEG and pings, and you can import them into the WOW slider um, quite easily. You'll notice that um, when mine loads, it automatically starts playing. Um, as soon as you hover over it, you have the pause button if you wish, or it, if, even if you don't turn on the pause button, as soon as you hover over it, it pauses. And then as you mouse out, it will continue to play. So if I want to pause on this particular slide, just hover over it. If you want to navigate through it manually, then put it on pause, and then I can click the forward button, I can click the backward button, or um, I've chosen to have these little thumbnails that are up here. You can place them up here, as you'll see in a minute, you can place them below, or you actually have thumbnails at the very bottom. And as you hover over these, you can see, oh, you know, that looks pretty interesting. I want to go ahead and I want to uh, see that one. And it will jump to that particular um, slide. And then again, you can turn the autoplay back off. Or um, on, and you'll, when you hover out or move out, mouse out, it will begin playing again. Okay. You also have the option for titles and descriptions. And again, you can choose to use those or not. They have a whole variety of templates to choose from. And I like a, uh, uh, my, my personal preference is a very um, kind of, um, kind of, uh, minimal approach. So that's what I prefer. But anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to do a little bit, um, I'm going to do a new share now. And I'm going to take you to the WOW slider. Let me see where it is. It's this one right here. And I'm going to have to do it again, do a new share, make sure that the whole desktop is visible so that you can see everything. Okay. If any of you can't see or hear for any reason, please, please let me know. Okay. So um, like Wix, um, like Moby Rise, there are no tutorials for these programs. Um, they basically uh, assume that if you just kind of move around and through them, um, you will kind of figure it out on your own how to do this. And there are just a handful of buttons at the top here that enable you to open a file, to save a file, to add images, to look at different um, templates and uh, settings for the, for the piece. And then at the very end, you can go ahead and publish it. And there are a variety of ways of publishing your, your, um, your piece. So let's start by, uh, I've already prepared images. 
and then you can add, I'm just drag and drop a folder on here, or you can um, click the plus by adding images. So let's go ahead and here, and I can add images here, and I'll add images from a folder because I have them all ready to go. Just have to make sure that I have the correct um, folder selected. So it happens to be in my documents folder. It happens to be in web files. Um, actually, it's not there at all. I was thinking of a different one. It's in an external drive that I have here. So I'm going to go into the G drive here. And it is, I'm going to look at the one that I did for my wife here. Um, show design. How about freelance? Well, there's quite a few files. Um, let's do the fine art. That'll find out here. And here are the where, where I save the WoW assets. Okay. So let's go ahead and select this folder. As I said, I want all of these images that um, I already prepared. And each of these are 640 by 480. And I'm going to go ahead and open the whole thing. And boom, there they are. They're all plopped in there. You can see all of the images over to the left. Okay, and if you don't like the order of the images or you want to add images, you can always do that. So, for example, if I wanted to take this particular image and I wanted it to be the first image, um, I could maybe take this one. It might be an easier approach and drag it down like so. Notice how I've changed the order of it. If I want to remove an image, so let's say I want to take this one and I want to remove it, just click there and it's gone from your selection. So to change the order of them, just move up, move down. Um, if you want to add an image, you can add it from here or you can add it from up here. It's pretty straightforward. And you can see as, we're, as I'm playing with the images to the left, it's already um, previewing over here. Okay. Now, there are different I'm going to move some other windows around here. There are different um, uh, presets to choose from. Over to the right, you can see that there are a whole bunch of them, quite a few. So the, this one is Epsilon. This one is Angular. This one is Stream. So within each of these templates, you have a choice. You know, you can come back in here and you want to change the colors. You want, you know, what aspect of it. There are, you can't change it entirely, but there are quite a few aspects of these that you can change. So again, I'm going to try to find the one, you know, one of the ones that I really like. You know, I find these forward and backward buttons a little bit too horsey on this one. So I'm going to try to find something that's a little bit um, Simpler, you know, a little bit, a little bit more understated. <clears throat> um, what do I have here? Uh, curse. Maybe that could be a good one. It's very minimal here. Really shouldn't matter. But I got it in the box. Let's try this one. This is pretty much understated. But you'll notice um, that it had that the little bubbly kind of, um, it, it's called dribbles, um, is the default transition. So if we look down here under multiple, you can select multiple effects, or you can just click through each one of these and you can try different transitions. This one is turn, this one is TV. That's kind of cool. This one is bubbles. Okay, we have brick. You know, a lot of them. Ken Burns effect. Uh, my favorites, though, again, are the understated ones. Um, <clears throat> I like um, something simple like uh, blur. What is blur? 
So let me look here, try to find it. Maybe fade. Yeah, so this is kind of a cross fade. So I like that one, that's kind of nice. Now to see more settings, um, you need to look below and you can see that the default size is 640 by 360. Well, that's not the size that I chose. So it's cropping part of my image off. So you need to pay close attention to that. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna go from 640 to um, six, by 360 to 640 by 480. And it will automatically change the format. And notice that I'm seeing all of my images um, in the way I had prepared them. So if you pick an image too large, to, or a, a format that's too large, too small, it will tend to crop or distort the image. And that's not what we're going for. So I'm getting something a little bit closer to what I want. If I want a different colored background, um, the backgrounds that I've chosen are actually part of the image. They are what I created in Photoshop. Okay, so that each of the images that are being presented, if they're a square format, a vertical or a horizontal, will all fit within the constraints of a 640 by 480 format. Now, you'll notice that we have down here the, the buttons at the bottom. Now, I think and, and why I wouldn't choose this format for myself is that these little um, buttons or these, um, uh, what are they called, uh, <coughs> thumbnails down here are a little bit too large for my taste. I want something a little bit smaller, but um, that's just part of this particular kind of uh, template. So that's something that I can't change. But I can come back in here, let me move this other around here, let's see. Okay, so from here, we can select different templates as well. Um, let's, so if I wanna try something different, I can do that from here, let's try Curse. Yeah, I like, that's probably the one that I've chosen for myself. Curse, very, something very simple. And we, again, we can go back from here and we can select the size. You can determine here as well, um, when you look at these little check boxes underneath, you wanna preserve the aspect ratio and I strongly recommend that you do that, otherwise it will distort the image. I don't wanna stretch small images, I don't wanna shrink large images because again, if you're not careful, those images will distort. Um, what they also have is that um, if you do choose to um, prepare your images a little bit differently, then they will have an automatic fill color. And by default, it's black. And I would prefer not to do that. So I just prepare the images ahead of time in Photoshop to make sure that they're correct. The other thing that you wanna um, take note of is the image quality, because when it takes your images and it converts them to JPEGs, if they're not already JPEGs, is the quality here. So this is kind of high quality. It's kind of an 80 out of a possible 100. And again, we can, can you know, we can change the, the, uh, the transition effect from here. You can also choose the font from here that right now Helvetica is selected. It's a little bit big. That's um, 19, maybe let's take this down to 16, okay. You can also determine here that you can, I just use the default settings, the delay between slides, two seconds, and the effect of the duration, two seconds. So that's a total of, you know, three, four seconds between each of them, and that's fine for me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll apply that. And we're getting something a little bit closer to, to my taste. Now, for each of these slides, you'll notice at the bottom, we have a title and we have the URL and over to the right is the where you place the description. So what I'm gonna do here, what it does by default is it takes the title um, from the name of your slide. And so what I can do here is if I just wanna leave faded, let's make sure that it's, this slide is selected. Now, this says faded blue cockroach. I'm gonna click here and I don't want 
the numbers, but I do want that is my the title of my slide. So if you if you even think a little bit more in advance, in terms of preparing your slides, um, you can um, when you name them, you know, there's even less work that you have to do in here. Okay, and we'll select this one. I'm not just going to go through these quickly because they're already. Um, what I might want to do though is final art install. Um, now I'm going to put a little space between there. Bergamot station. A little space between there. So I'm just adding some spaces. And again, you can play with this until the cows come home. Get rid of this. Okay, so I've done a few of these. So that's where you add um, and edit and change the titles of the slides. If there is a URL, because one of the things that this will allow you to do is um, if you have a YouTube video and you put the, the URL in here, it will play that video. Um, I haven't done that. Um, I just use stills and I have a separate um, menu that I use for my YouTube videos, but that would be something that would be um, worth pursuing. As I said here, I'll just say, um, let's go back up to the top again. You know, I'll just say, you know, this is one of my earliest um, artworks. And when it comes back around to um, the slide, you'll be able to see the changes on the fly. Okay. Now, right now, these guys are sliding across. And I can go back in and I can actually make more changes to that. So if I come up here to the tools, if I click on that, You'll notice that I have the title of this. I can add a title of the slideshow, and I'll put in here um, Marie's um, Fine Art. Okay. You can choose whether you want it to autoplay or not. Um, I kind of like it to pause on mouse over. Um, I don't want it to pause, I want it to continue. If you want to randomize the order of it, you can do that. If you have a video in here, which typically would be, as I said, would be a YouTube video, you can autoplay that or not. I can add a pause or play button, which I've chosen to do. Um, if, that, if you find that pause or play button to be kind of annoying, because you can just hover over it anyway, then um, you can remove that. So all of these are done just by simple checkboxes. Okay? You can choose a box format, which is what I have. If you want it to be the full width of your screen, you can do that. A full screen. I just like the smaller one, so I'm going to leave those. Um, I'm going to select. Um, these are pertain to the how, to the to the the titles and the descriptions. Okay. So I want to show controls on mouse over. Um, show previous and next buttons. Show descriptions, and instead of parallax or move or slide or fade, maybe slide fade would be a nice one. Uh, that's a nice one. Uh, we can remove um, uh, frame and shadow. I'm going to leave those on there. And then it asks you here, where do you want those bullets? You know, that are for the used for the thumbnails to the bottom. Where do you want them at the top? So let me go ahead and change them at this top. Um, you can also have film strip, which is at the bottom. So let me go ahead and click that and show you what that looks like. And there you go. So if you would rather have them at the bottom, little thumbnails, then that's okay too. That's kind of nice actually. Okay, I'm going to go back up and I'm going to remove those. Um, so rather than at the, uh, the film strip, I'm going to use bullet navigation. And I'm going to leave it at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Now you can also specify thumbnail size too, and I've left that default. 
So I'm just about ready to go to, um, to publish. And then you have to decide <clears throat> once this is saved. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll save this. Okay, so I'll go to slider. And I'm going to say save project as. And I'm going to save mine on the desktop. But normally you would save yours in your root folder. That's the safest place to save it. And I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to call them um, slideshow demo. Just to make sure I have everything in place and save them one local place here. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll call it um, Marie's Fine Art. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and save it there. So what this does is it saves your um, your WoW slider file, kind of like a Photoshop file or a resident file. Now, the thing that I caution you about is that um, I'm using images from an external hard drive. It does not embed those images. It links those images. So in the future, if I go to open up this file from that um, the file that's located on my desktop, and it does not have access to that external hard drive, it won't know what to do. So it's something to remember. So if I were doing this for myself or for real, I would want to put these files, instead of on that external hard drive, I would want to put them in the same folder where the, um, the slideshow is located and leave it there. Now, the next step is, um, okay, if I'm happy with everything, it gives you two options. It can say, you know, do you want to insert it directly into an HTML page? Do you want to save it as an HTML or do you want to publish it? My preferred choice, I've tried all of these, is just to publish it. And it gives you an option. And what I want to do is I want to publish it to a folder. And normally it would be inside the root folder of your, um, your website, okay? If you know what the, F, the address is of an FTP server, you can publish it directly to that. I have tried that and if it's not 100% accurate, it doesn't work that well. I've had mixed um, results too with insert directly into a page. So I prefer to just have it published to a folder um, and then I will copy paste and place it in there myself. Um, if you want to use Joomla, a Joomla create a Joomla model, module or a WordPress slider, share on Facebook, you can do all of these. You can publish it to Google Drive. All of those are fine. I have never used Joomla, Words, WordPress, or Facebook. None of those for my slideshows. Never, never, never. Um, I get in the habit now of publishing it to directly to a, um, a, a folder and then inserting it um, myself. The next thing that you need to be very careful of, because when it creates this slideshow, it creates two additional folders. Um, one with all of the images in it and another one with the mechanics, um, the code and everything that actually make this thing operate. And you need to upload those files separately. And with each slideshow you create, there is an ID that is associated with it. So as you'll see on my website, I have like two or three of these slideshows and each one has a separate ID so that it knows which group of slides and which um, code to um, refer to. So since this is a, a test, I'm just using the single one right now. I'll use one. And I'm going to go ahead and apply. Um, but before I do, I want to make sure that this is going inside my, I'm going to have it publish on my desktop. And I'm going to have it put it inside um, the folder that I just created. So let's close this. 
Let's go to my desktop. And here's the slideshow demo. So I'm going to publish it inside here. Okay, alongside of the, you can see, maybe you can see grayed out. This is Marie's um, slideshow. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And I'm going to apply it. And then I'll go back and I'll publish it and make sure that it publishes correctly. So now I can go ahead down here and I can select publish. And when it publishes, now this is what you get. It actually publishes it to an HTML file. So you can see what it's going to look like. And that permits you to, um, to proofread it to make sure that you know, all of your titles are spelled correctly and if whatever uh, uh, descriptions that you have have been added correctly. Make sure that the order of the slides and everything is um, working properly. And I can go ahead and I can pause it. And it's all functional right from here. OK. I can autoplay again. Now, the next thing that you need to be concerned about is that in order to insert it in your page, and this is what we'll continue with um, next Tuesday, is that you need to upload um, the, the data one and the engine one. These are the two folders that I was telling you about that it will, that will be or saved inside that folder. And then there's two bits of code that you need to copy paste inside there. Now, if you have used, um, as we have uh, in our um, lessons, templates, remember that the, um, the head of the document is locked. So you would have to detach, it, um, detach that page from the template. And you would have to take this code right here and paste it inside there, just before the very, at the very end of the head of the document. Okay, and that gives it basic instructions for the jQuery, and the meaning the JavaScript that's used, and the, the CSS styling, and that sort of thing that's that's built into this to make it look a specific way that you have chosen. Okay, so that goes into the head of the document, and you just simply copy that and paste it at the very end. So just before the, the closing tag of the head. And then you take this bit of code and you copy it and you paste it and you insert it into the section um, that you want. And notice it already has a section tag here, but you put it inside the div, um, typically in the main content for us, um, of where you want that slideshow to be presented and paste it in there and test it and you should see it and it should work and it should be in really, really good shape. That's it. That's all there is to it. Very easy to use. Um, okay, so we'll continue with this. Um, this is a short demo today, 35 minutes or so, 30, half an hour. And we'll continue with it um, next Tuesday and I'll take what I've done here and we'll paste it inside one of our lessons and show you how it works. Okay, and I can review this for anyone. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop sharing for the moment, bring that back, and I'm going to pause the recording.